Good evening and thank you for joining us. We begin tonight with the unprecedented toll COVID-19 is taking on the travel industry. Air Canada says it will have to lay off 20,000 employees, more than half its workforce. Travel has tanked with countries shutting down and the entire global airline industry is in trouble. As Mike Durley reports, the Prime Minister still hasn't offered a bailout to Canada's airline sector. With no end to the pandemic in sight, the airline industry is looking for a lifeline. At Air Canada, it can't get much worse with layoffs affecting 20,000 staff next month. You know, I, I think we reached the bottom for sure. So, you know, what's, are we going to dig further down? To that end, all eyes were on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau at his daily media briefing. But when asked about the airline industry, he offered nothing. In all sectors of the economy, but certain sectors have been hit even harder. That's why we're going to keep working with various sectors. We're going to continue to work with uh, sectors. His non-response was met with frustration from industry insiders who have seen every other G7 country come up with measures to support their domestic aviation sector. Have they got a master plan? Have they got something, you know, if they indicated that they had that, it would be reassuring. Uh, we have no indications that they have any direction in what they're doing other than putting out fires. Trudeau was asked about a bailout similar to the one in the U.S. and nationalization, as Italy has done with Air Alitalia. Again, he offered no response other than to point to wage subsidy programs already in place. I don't have the crystal ball and I can't tell you what is realistic or not, but, but we're going to have to find a solution because we need them. We're going to need Air Canada, right? So nationalization is a possibility. Getting some private equity into it, why not? But who would be willing to buy into the industry right now? The Montreal-based International Air Transport Association has painted a grim picture with travel dropping 90% in Canada, the U.S. and Europe. It's estimating passenger traffic won't rebound to pre-crisis levels until at least 2023, and even later if restrictions are extended. Another issue for Canadian Airlines is only the largest qualify for the government loan program, leaving smaller airlines vulnerable, which would create an even bigger problem. Most important is that in many, many regions, there's no other way to connect to those regions than through the smaller airlines. The large airlines are, are key to our economic development, but the smaller airlines or our lifeline to many regions. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. If Trudeau has a plan in the works, he hasn't said, leaving the airline industry financially grounded. Microlight Global News, Toronto. Families across Canada are also struggling, and this month there will be more financial help for those with children. On Wednesday, those eligible for the Canada Child Benefit will receive an extra $300 per child as part of their regular May payment. And in the summer, Ottawa will give families another boost to help with rising costs. Starting on July 20th, we will increase the Canada Child Benefit once again for the upcoming year. Every summer for the past three years, we boosted the CCB to help keep up with the cost of living. This summer will be no different. That will raise the maximum benefit to just over $6,700 per child under the age of six and just under $6,000 per child age six through 17. The government has also allocated $40 million to help women fleeing domestic violence. Today, the Minister for Women and Gender Equality said the money is being shared among 500 shelters, as well as centres supporting victims of sexual assault. The federal government also committed $15 million to support female entrepreneurs to help their businesses through the economic crisis caused by COVID-19. The funding will go directly to organizations that are already part of the government's Women Entrepreneurship Strategy Fund, which provides support for women who want to start or grow a business. Health Canada has approved the first clinical trial of a COVID-19 vaccine. Human trials will begin at the Canadian Centre for Vaccinology at Dalhousie University in Halifax. The National Research Council of Canada has been working closely with CanSino Biologics in China, which created the vaccine using living cells grown by scientists here in Canada. That research is in the second phase of human trials. According to the World Health Organization, there are about 100 other potential vaccines that are in the early stages of development. I think this is just the first of a number of them, um, and that's very important to have multiple vaccines going through the process. 
uh, because we need to have that redundancy. We need not all vaccines ultimately will work. And in order to make sure that we have more than one that works, we need to be studying a number of vaccines. The new series that goes inside the COVID-19 pandemic from the front lines to the everyday heroes helping us cope with the unprecedented change. Coronavirus, the new reality. A global news special Sundays at 7 on Global.